Hi, thanks for joining. Um, I'm Dr. Alec Nikolic. Um, I'm the founder and the, uh, the CEO of Skin Miles. And today we're going to have a question and answer session. Oh, so I hope all of you are doing well uh, during this uh, COVID-19 lockdown. Um, I'm, I'm sure it's trying for everyone and it is a difficult time, but I hope all of you are, are safe and, and healthy. And again, thanks for joining. There's quite a few new people that have come on. So thank you. Um, great to see you. As you can see, I'm at home. We, we are not working we, like everyone else with the lockdown period. Um, but yeah, that, that's how it is. We, we're trying to flatten that curve and um, that's the best thing that we can do for now. Okay, so let me start off with the first question. Um, this was sent to us by Sue. Um, and she asked for the best anti-aging supplements uh, for skin aging, please. You know, um, when it comes to skin supplements, I think that one should look specifically at supplements that contain antioxidants. And there's a wide variety of antioxidants, uh, including things like vitamin C. Um, but ultimately, one also needs to consider using um, those particular type of ingredients and in particular antioxidants as your topical regime. A lot of the antioxidants that we take by mouth will have more of a potential effect on the actual body as opposed to the skin and so I would rather that one instead of taking supplements for the skin you actually um, basically use products that contain vitamin C, vitamin A um, and similar antioxidants such as ferulic acid uh, hyaluronic acid etc and for me that is your your best anti-aging re regime supplements that I would recommend for an aging perspective is to consider something that increases your SPF protection SPF um, is vital to help prevent aging of the skin and if you take supplements like the HelioCare um, capsules or even the Lamal Oval capsules they increase the natural skin's SPF. So um, th that for me, I think, is most probably your most important supplement to take, something that will help protect the skin and help delay that actual aging. Um, we had a second question that came in from Karika. Thank you, Karika, for the question. And she asked, what is the best treatment to get rid of small brown liver spots on the cheeks and the nose? So basically for those of us that are not aware, people refer to liver spots um, as those hyperpigmented spots that are caused due to UV exposure or to sun exposure. And very simply what happens is in those areas, the sun has stimulated the pigment cells that pr produce pigment, they're known as mel melanocytes, and they uh, deposit the pigment and into the, into the skin as well as into the surrounding area. And pigment pigmentation or hyperpigmentation as re is referred to can be very difficult to treat with a topical regime. Your most important is to consider or have a SPF that's applied several times daily to practice sun avoidance as much as possible, but also um, to use a topical vitamin C and um, other skin lightening ingredients like kojic acid, beaverry acid, licorice extract, etc. in your serum, morning serum and in the evening to use something like a vitamin A, such as retinol or gran active retinol, because all of that helps to lighten those pigmented spots. Um, ultimately, what you most probably will need to consider, um, Karika, to help with those brown spots is a laser treatment, such as IPL or fractional lasers. Uh, um, uh, my preference when it comes to removing pigmentation um, is to consider IPL and the very simple reason IPL stands for intense pulse light and it is similar to a laser except that it uses a light source um, a xenon flash lamp to actually give off the energy or the wavelength of light that that pigment is uh, absorbs and um, why I prefer IPL is because it's um, it's very little discomfort um, it, it it produces no downtime there might be a little bit of redness where you work uh, on the skin um, which settles quite quickly and um, there really is no downtime so you can have had the treatment and goes it goes straight back to work um, as opposed to a fractional laser which is also very effective to treat 
but it does have some downtime. So it really is up to you which of those two types of lasers you prefer. The IPL might require a few extra sessions and while the fractional laser might require fewer sessions, but the downside is the, the downtime. Um, she also asked if one would see uh, better results if one did redermalization or PRP. Um, the answer for that is neither of those will actually help with the pigmentation uh, compared to what an IPL or a fractional laser treatment could do. Now PRP is um, basically uh, stands for plasma recombinant uh, uh, treatment and it what involves taking your blood, having it spun down and they remove the platelets from the serum and that gets uh, applied onto the skin either through a needling device or it gets injected directly into the skin. And the theory behind it is that it has a higher amount of stem cells which help to rejuvenate the actual skin. And so it is more to help improve the quality of the skin as opposed to target your pigmentation. And redermalization is basically injecting a small amounts or little boluses all in the, into the skin um, that act to increase hydration and collagen stimulation. So that also really wouldn't help with your hyperpigmentation concern. Um, and then we also have another question and that's from Penny. Uh, Penny, she said, what is the best way to tighten the skin on the jowl and the neck area? Uh, Penny, it's a quick answer. Uh, the best way to tighten skin is surgery. Uh, unfortunately, there, there really isn't uh, a topical regime and there really isn't uh, some type of um, technology-based device uh, or any other non-surgical uh, treatment that's going to give you the best approach to tighten skin. Um, topical treatments like retinol combined with dermapen may to a certain degree improve. There are some skin tightening technologies which have variable results that can also help and one could consider um, uh, temporary or even permanent threads to help tighten um, that area. But uh, ultimately there is very little that one can do with very lax skin one would need to consider surgery. If it's only slightly lax, then definitely something like a retinol uh, to, combined with the dermapen treatment will have some improvement and tighten the skin to a certain degree. Um, some of the more aggressive fractional lasers may also help to tighten skin. Um, and also the newer plasma-based lasers can also help tighten skin. But there is a limit to what it can achieve and if that skin laxity is also combined with the loss of volume or that the fat uh, pockets in our face have dropped, then that is very difficult to lift or tighten using some technology or non-surgical based treatment. So in those instances, one would need to consider uh, surgery. We have another question and this is from Colette. So Colette, thank you for, for the question. Uh, she asked, what is the best non-invasive product or treatment to treat pigmentation? So this is another question about pigmentation. I did obviously answer it in that previous question. And obviously hyperpigmentation is a major concern. Uh, 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 well over 40% of us will suffer from hyperpigmentation. And it classically tends to start in our, um, I would say, already in our 30, 30s and 40s, depending on the degree of sun exposure we had when we were growing up. And ultimately, your most important approach is to help prevent further pigmentation using a sunscreen and to use sun avoidance as much as possible. Um, you would also need to consider adding topical uh, serums that help target hyperpigmentation. And for me, my mainstay is a vitamin C serum in the morning and in the evening is to have a retinol or a, a vitamin A based um, a vitamin A based type of uh, ingredient. Uh, at night and so that, that would be your topical regime and then you can also consider adding things like um, a, a chemical peel your superficial chemical peels done every four to six weeks will help to exfoliate the skin and help to start lighten the pigmentation glycolic acid chemical peels are, are, are an excellent choice for superficial pigmentation um, and when you combine it with, with other chemical peel ingredients, such as citric acid, or lactic acid, or kojic acid, we get further improvement in the deeper sections of the skin where the pigmentation can also be found. And so chemical peels I'd also consider adding. 
Uh, what is nice about all of those ingredients I've just mentioned in the form of a chemical peel is that they are true lunchtime peels, not because you can do them in an hour, but because they produce very little downtime or, or no downtime. There's no skin sloughing, uh, there's no, no scabbing if, if performed correctly. So you can have the treatment and go back to work straight away after the, after the treatment. And so from a pigmentation perspective, it's your prote prevention. Uh, as well as actually charging, uh, as well as actually treating with a topical regime and then considering some kind of in-office treatment, whether it's chemical pills and like I mentioned earlier, IPL or other types of lasers uh, for the visible pigmentation. So Colette carries on. It's quite an interesting story. She says that as a teen, she had really congested skin blackheads and breakouts and um, she also feels that she's used the incorrect products for a number of years and regrettably not enough sunscreen and uh, because she was worried about breakouts she was concerned that since that the sunscreens would actually aggravate or increase the actual uh, breakouts and now at 48 she's quite diligent about sunscreens um, but still gets some congestion and the question is what is the best products to treat that congestion and what is the best anti-aging uh, sunscreen that i can use daily well um, the one thing I'm going to also just sidetrack a little bit is I'm, I'm going to try stay away from mentioning specific brands, except in certain circumstances. What I will mention are more is to focus more on ingredients and um, basically, uh, and in those cases, I'll mention a number of brands that may have those ingredients. Uh, that's just to be fair to all the brands out there. Um, the, the best way to help prevent congestion is to use some form of um, solution, whether it's in the form of a toner or some kind of product that you can apply to the skin uh, that contains salicylic acid. And the specific reason is salicylic acid has shown to have a very high propensity or a good effect on helping with pores or with sebum um, on the skin. And what it also has the ability compared to other types of acids that may be used is it ha has the ability to penetrate deep into pores to clean it out completely from sebum as well as dirt. And what this will do is it will start reducing the size of the pores, so making them finer, they'll produce less sebum and that will result in less congestion on the skin. Um, so things that contain salicylic acid, you can get uh, really good products in the uh, Dermaquest range, uh, in the lamell range, in the skin range, uh, etc. So that, look out for salicylic acid. It's usually in the form of a pad that you apply all over the skin. Um, there's other benefits to salicylic acid. It also helps to exfoliate the skin and it also helps to improve the penetration of your other ingredients when you apply them. Um, and then what's the best anti-aging sunscreen? For me, the, your best sunscreen is the one that contains zinc uh, and or titanium. So zinc oxide or titanium dioxide. And um, I, I'm, I, I don't mind chemical, uh, block, uh, chemical absorbers as ingredients um, in the actual um, sunscreen, but it must contain either zinc or a combination of zinc and or titanium actually in that sunscreen. And the main reason why my preference is for mineral sun blockers is because minerals help to reflect light. So before they can actually enter the skin and cause any damage, they reflect it off the skin as opposed to uh, you having a sunscreen with only chemical absorbers that absorbs that UV ray and then makes it inert. But that process of making it inert or inactive re releases heat and that heat is or can be linked to mutational changes within the actual skin and that can therefore result in um, damage to the skin including pigmentation and um, other skin concerns that we see with, with UV uh, uh, skin aging. And so for me, when it comes to selecting sunscreens, there are a large variety of brands, including Helocare, Dermacutic, uh, Lamel, D D Dermaquest, um, etc. And all of them basically contain a zinc and or a titanium base as part of their sunscreen ingredients. Now, what is important is to look out for um, what, what certain ingredients do, unfortunately, cause damage to our environment, in particular the coral reefs. Um, there are quite a few of the um, chemical absorbers that, that um, have shown to directly impact our 
coral, bar coral reef barriers. So that's another reason why I prefer not to, not to uh, actually use um, that in a sunscreen. And it also has been found recently that when it comes to zinc and titanium, that you shouldn't use uh, sunscreens which have nanoparticles. The nanoparticles are small enough also to enter in the fine pores of the actual uh, coral reef and can cause damage. So from an environmental perspective, uh, let's stick to the zinc and the titanium. Okay, so we've just had a question. Uh, I just want to check. Uh, that's from Blue. Thank you, Blue. Uh, do you think uh, eye creams really work? Uh, can't one use a serum like retinol around crow's lines rather than spending extra money on eye creams? Thanks, Blue. That's a, a great question. Now, um, there's two sides to that answer. The, the very simple and quick answer is uh, eye creams are not a necessity in a skin regime. If you have a budget, you have, to have a budget and you want to uh, focus to get the best results, the one thing that I suggest with my patients is to actually um, to not consider an eye cream if the serum, such as a vitamin C based serum, or as you mentioned, a vitamin A based serum, is formulated to be placed around the eyes, both the lower lid as well as the upper eyelid, and your eyes don't become sensitized. So that's the difference with a, a, a general face serum and a, a specific topical eye cream is generally eye creams are, um, are, are usually formulated to reduce spread and so also to reduce sensitivity of the eye itself. So Blue, if your serum is working for you around the eye, uh, the answer to that question is there is absolutely no need to get an eye cream. Um, and then I think some more questions are coming in. Let me just see the, the next one. And this is from Amy. Thanks, Amy, for the question. Uh, what is the best for dark marks caused by acne? Um, and here, okay, so now dark marks caused by acne can be difficult to treat. And the very simple reason is that it's slightly different to hyperpigmentation caused by UV damage. And um, the reason for that is because there's an inflammatory response that has taken place in the skin. That inflammatory response, so for example, if we have an acne lesion, there's an inflammatory response in that skin area to help treat or manage that acne lesion. And part of that inflammatory response that's taking place actually causes a stimulation of cells to try and heal that area. And part of the stimulation is of your melanocytes, uh, which is your pigment producing cells. And often what can happen in some people is that the acne lesion gets healed and it disappears, but the pigment remains. And also that pigment can sometimes be brown in color and it sometimes can be actually quite red in color. And so it is difficult because there's this inflammatory response that's created it. The treatment is very similar to how we would treat normal hyperpigmentation. And you would need to consider your vitamin C in the morning over that area. You can even spot treat it on those areas. You would need to consider a retinol-based serum. Also, one can um, do a spot treatment. I would also uh, look for specific depigmenting serums um, uh, which contain kojic acid, licorice extract, beerberia extract, uh, arbutin, etc. All those ingredients that help to lighten pigmentation. And I would also consider using uh, uh, chemical peels. Uh, the ultimate would be to actually just do some IPL, intense pulse light, over those lesions. And that should actually um, help lighten that pigment as much as possible and even maybe make it disappear. Okay, so here we have a... Um, a, a, a question from Antoinette. Um, it, it, thank you, Antoinette. That's, that's a great question. What can I use for dry skin? My skin burns sometimes. So, Antoinette, uh, I, um, you know, this isn't a difficult question to answer accurately, um, uh, especially over a live session like this, because just looking at your question, I think that there are two issues here. By, 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 by saying that there's dry skin, and that your skin actually burns. I feel that your skin has become sensitized. And um, if your skin has become sensitized or is sensitive, um, then that typically means or typically indicates that there's some skin barrier function problem. With the skin barrier function, if it's not at, at its optimum, you will get either excessively oily skin or excessively dry skin. It could be either of those two. And classically, what people complain about when that skin barrier is compromised 
is that their skin burns. And especially when you apply a plain moisturizer, even a sunscreen, uh, or sometimes just during the day. So it would be great if I could uh, actually examine the skin and even do a Vizia skin analysis because that gives us a more in-depth view of what's happening with the skin. Um, you're welcome to go on to face to face on Skin Miles, which will help you upload a, uh, a photograph of your face and answer some questions. And um, please, if you do upload a photograph, give us a high res photo uh, of the skin and that will give me an, a, a better ability to look at your skin and give you uh, some guidelines on what to do. But my feeling is, just looking at your description, it's a skin barrier compromise, and I would look at products that will help restore that skin barrier before you start applying any other um, products with active ingredients in them. Um, and the skin barrier sometimes can take, can take as long as eight to 12 weeks of treatment to completely uh, settle and to become healthy again. Um, but uh, uh, Antoinette, please uh, send us, uh, complete that face-to-face. -face. It is on the Skin Miles uh, page. Uh, it'll be great for me to have a closer look at your skin and then uh, we can go from there. Uh, why I, I uh, promote uh, vitamin C as part of your serum and vitamin A as the main ingredient for your evening serum. You know, for me and my approach when it comes to um, when it comes to your topical skin regime, I really believe, I really believe that um, the th for me, if you use a cleanser and a moisturizer and an SPF, it doesn't matter which brand it is. It really is not important how expensive it is as long. For me, the most important guideline for you is that when you use a cleanser, a moisturizer and a sunscreen that is specific for your skin type. So if you have oily skin, you only use a cleanser and a moisturizer and an SPF that is specific for oily and or acne skin. And similarly, if you have dry skin, then you use a cleanser as well as a moisturizer and an SPF specifically indicated for dry skin. And so that would be your guideline. And how much, um, whatever brand that fits and suits you, that's great. Where your budget should be spent when it comes to skincare, for me, is your serums, the morning one and your evening one. And why, uh, to answer my question that I gave to myself, why vitamin A and vitamin C is because if we look at the number of clinical studies that have been done on those particular ingredients, we are very well aware of the actual positive effects on the skin. And so it's been proved or backed by science. And that's the reason why I promote those, um, why I actually promote those particular uh, types of ingredients. Thanks, Antoinette. I'm glad. Um, I'm, thank you for that comment. That your skin is very sensitive. You know, Antoinette, chances are it is a skin barrier problem. And so uh, please complete that face to face. It would be really great to see your skin. I'm sure that we can actually help you. Okay, here's another question. Uh, thank you from Blue again. Uh, what do you recommend as a salon treatment, chemical pills or dermapen? It's confusing. Well, Blue, it depends on what you want to achieve with your skin. Um, so chemical pills have their specific indication and dermapen have theirs. For me, I think the easiest way to look at it is if you have a skin which is in good condition. Uh, very few pores, not that much pigmentation, um, maybe a few fine lines, uh, maybe a slight roughness in texture, but overall healthy looking, I would then use chemical peels as a way to maintain and even improve some of those mild conditions on the skin. If your skin has slightly deeper lines, there's a lot more fine lines, uh, there are more visible pores, the texture is, is a lot more rougher and irregular, um, and um, you want to maximize the type of treatment that you can get an effect on the skin, then what I would do is basically look at your dermapen treatments. Uh, in our practice to maximize the effect of dermapens, we use a very specialized retinol-based topical. So that will be put onto the skin. Once the skin is cleaned, obviously, and all makeup and everything is removed, um, this retinol uh, serum or solution is applied all over the skin, then the, the actual lubricating gel, and then the, the needling or the dermapen takes place. And why we do that is because now the dermapen needles force that retinol deeper into the skin, and it has a much heightened effect. 
the, if the res end results are definitely better than doing Dermapen alone, although you will get good results doing Dermapen on its own. Um, just there is a, a, a greater degree of downtime when it comes to adding retinol to your Dermapen treatment. And so there will be high, more redness, there will be a sloughing and even dryness of the skin, which can take five to seven days. And so um, I know that it's confusing, but your chemical pills is for more when there's less skin concerns uh, and dermapen and where, is when there are more or greater degree of skin concerns. So I hope that that helps and that answers the question. Okay, so yeah, we have a, a question from Rita. Thank you, Rita, for the question. Um, we're, we're spending more time in front of devices, true. Uh, should we wear sunscreen at night because of the blue light? I think that's a, a very good question. Thank you for that, Rita. Yes, definitely. Um, your sunscreens should be used whether you are indoors or outdoors. It's, it's been shown that our invisible light, uh, which is classically emitted from, from screens and monitors, um, definitely increase uh, the um, uh, free radical damage uh, in our skin um, and can produce um, aging skin concerns. What I would consider, however, adding uh, is, is vitamin C in your topical regime. Vitamin C is a very strong antioxidant. Uh, there's multiple great brands which have high doses of vitamin C that can be used as serums, including your SkinCeuticals, your Skin, um, the SK.IN brand, uh, also from Lamel, um, from uh, Dermacutic, from Dermaquest, from Abaji. There's some really good brands out there with amazing uh, vitamin C. And your best protection of, for, for your skin is when you combine your antioxidant such as vitamin C with a SPF. Um, studies have shown that that combination works better uh, of, of when you do one or either uh, of the two. Um, let me just check here. Uh, Doreen, um, wish I can come to you for some treatments, but I'm in Eisner. Thanks, Doreen. That, that's a nice comment. Yeah, I wish you could come as well. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll see. What we'll see once the uh, once the lockdown um, is is over. Um, so, uh, so Rita, I see that you you've given us another question. Um, so, gloss at night too. You know, um, this is one of the reasons. Definitely, you can apply it because of the the vitamin C. It also depends on the distance you are at night. If you if you're referring to watching a TV uh, and you have a quite a far distance, then it's not necessary. Um, but if, like for example, I'm working with a big screen in front of my face, the, you know, during this period, um, and I get a lot of, of emissions, then definitely uh, I would consider uh, adding glass at night. That's also, Rita, one of the reasons why we designed Bounce. Uh, Skin Bounce is a combination of both vitamin A and uh, vitamin C. It's kind of a, a flash two and a gloss in one. And um, the reason behind that was because of the vitamin C's ability to help lighten pigmentation um, um, and that's why it's used together with that vitamin A but it's a, it's a great antioxidant to use against monitors as well. Um, thanks Janet, there's another question. Um, are derma rollers the effective and the ones at home? Definitely. Um, you know, Janet, the, the derma ro rollers will definitely give you a good effect and I can uh, recommend it but it depends uh, on uh, how often you do it. And generally speaking, you should with the, with the at-home ones because the needles are much smaller and the inflammatory response is not as, um, as, as significant as, for example, when you're doing the, um, the in-clinical, uh, in, at the rooms kind of uh, dermapen depth. And so you kind of need to do it every day. Uh, I spoke to uh, Des Fernandes many years ago um, and um, about derma pens and about the needling devices. And he said that basically to, to ensure that he gets the best results, he leaves his needling device in the shower. And so when he gets in and he cleans his, he cleanses his face, he then does a, a quick um, derma rolling, derma rolling uh, of the face while he's actually in the shower. Um, so that forces him to actually use it every day. Results are good, and, but they take time to be as effective as, for example, six sessions of the deeper needle scene with, for example, of a derma pen. You're looking at a good six months to a year, uh, unfortunately, to get those results. 
Um, Jackie, uh, which uh, treatments, thank you for the question, which treatments are best for skin tightening? Um, we had a question like that a little bit earlier where, we, where someone asked about what is the best way to tighten. Uh, Jackie, you know, um, when it comes to treatments, there, there are a number of technology-based treatments that one can consider. Uh, there's various skin tightening from the Cineron Refirm uh, to ultrasound-based devices um, like the Althera, um, and there's the more aggressive fractional lasers. All of that can help tighten skin uh, to a certain degree. Um, even something like, uh, then you can also add non-technology-based, and that is something like your combination of retinol and dermapen. Uh, all of that would actually give you some tightening effect, but it is important, and this is what I mentioned in that previous, in that actual previous uh, question when I answered, is we must differentiate between just a little bit of skin laxity versus a loss of volume and where fat pads have fallen, because that's not just skin, their skin laxity. That's an underlying, under the skin, we have fat pads. Fat pads, when we are younger, Yes, provide shape to the face, but very importantly, they provide support. And unfortunately, as we get older, which normally starts within our early 30s to 35, those fat pockets start to thin and start dropping, and they become more prominent where we notice them, um, usually in our 40s or mid-40s, and, and obviously later on in life as well. And if that fat has, has, doesn't, isn't as full as it can be, it's not supporting the skin. And so tightening has a limited effect. It's more a volume thing. It's more that we need more fat or uh, as we do in, in my practice, we add um, some dermal filler to help produce that lift and support to the actual um, skin. Um, so I hope that helps and answers the question. And then um, I have here from Dominique. Thank you, Dominique. Uh, what is your opinion on dermaplaning? Um, yeah, I think, uh, to be honest, Dominique, I, I, I actually don't know much about dermaplaning. Unfortunately, we don't do it in our practice. I think it's predominantly done at um, salons, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the concept, if I think about it, uh, will, um, ha will be beneficial uh, for, for the skin. Uh, it all is on the basis of an inflammatory response. Whenever we produce an inflammatory response in the skin, it forces those skin cells that are in the skin to um, actually, uh, it, it forces the, the, those skin cells to undergo a healing phase. And that healing in, in also includes things like your collagen and elastin stimulation. And um, sometimes dermaplane is also combined with a chemical pill to improve the depth and the, and the uh, type of inflammatory response that's, that's seen. And so, yes, I do believe it is, is a good treatment. Uh, there's here a question from Celeste. Thank you, Celeste. Uh, hi, Dr. Alec. Hi, Celeste. Thank you for the question. How do I start a skin, uh, skin care routine for my kids? Two boys and one girl. Uh, yeah, good question. Well, you know, it depends on their ages. Um, it, it really is. And I think that, you know, if, you're, if your children are uh, teenagers or younger, um, then I would basically focus the, your, your skincare routine on a normal general cleanser and sun, sun protection. Uh, for me, that's vital. That's something that if they become diligent and use it every single day, they will thank you when they reach their 30s and their 40s. So uh, that's something for me that is the most important thing uh, in the sense of a skin regime. If, um, if some of them... Uh, have acne or blemishes, are starting to develop oily or poor skin, then a very light uh, benzoyl peroxide or uh, a salicylic acid based solution um, would, uh, I would add. But really, other than that, you know, in young children, I don't think it's necessary unless they have some kind of skin concern. Um, I mean, skin type such as a very oily skin or a very dry skin. Uh, and then you would need to add a moisturizer. But generally, with, with children which have normal or even combination skins, I would focus on a very normal um, entry-level uh, cleanser as well as your SPF. Okay, um, then I see that we have a question here from Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, please explain 
what the skin miles are and what are the benefits of collecting them. Okay, thank you, Michelle. Now, um, skin miles um, are basically our, our reward system. So when someone purchases a product, each product has an allocation of a, a number of, uh, of miles or rewards. Those miles then uh, accumulate into that particular person's or customer's account and they can be basically used to deduct uh, that those particular mile amounts when converted to rands uh, off their next purchase. So it just makes uh, future purchases uh, a little bit cheaper and a, and a bit more affordable. Uh, we've actually had some customers that uh, collect their miles and, and then order quite a few products and basically get them for free. Um, while we have other customers that each time they order, they use their miles and that reduces their, their total um, amount, either, depending on how many miles they collected, um, but it reduces that amount. Um, but basically, that, that's the, the main benefit of, of using the miles. Like I've got Mandy. Thank you, Mandy. Which targeted treatment is best for melasma on the forehead? Okay. Um, you know, Mandy, unfortunately, melasma is very difficult to treat. It's irrespective from a topical regime or a, a treatment, an in-office based treatment like lasers. And the very simple reason is that melasma, and for those, those that have joined us that are not aware, melasma is a hormonally induced pigmentation. So basically, our melanocytes or little pigment cells that sit in our skin get activated to make more melanin or more pigment because of hormonal fluctuations, and in particular, estrogen and progesterone. And so that can be triggered off by pregnancy, by the oral contraceptive pill, as well as other contraceptive pill and other hormone-based treatments. And because it's hormonally induced, unless that hormone fluctuation is um, treated or managed, that the melanin is consistently and constantly being uh, stimulated. So whatever you do to try and treat it, you're actually only treating the symptom as opposed to the cause. Now, um, basically, when it comes to melasma, you need to consider a very good topical regime. Your topical regime must consist of, uh, when, I, when it comes to hyperpigmentation, I divide it into three parts. It's your pre uh, preventative, it's your exfoliation, and it's your treatment from a topical regime perspective. Your preventative is where you use your SPF um, several times a day. You use sun avoidance as much as possible. That means a wide brim hat. And if you're going to go watch a, a sports event or something, you have to be in the sun, then take an umbrella. Don't expose that, that mel melasma to the sun or that skin to the sun. The second is part of your prevention, um, as I've mentioned, is to use your SPF, but apply it several times a day. Exfoliation, you definitely need to exfoliate at home. And that typically means that you would need to get some form of glycolic acid or a salicylic acid uh, based solution that will help you slough the skin all the time because that brings that pigment to the surface and also has an effect on the pigment itself. And then from a treatment perspective, look at depigmenting ingredients. Those are serums that contain vitamin C, vitamin A, arbutin, kojic acid, etc. That needs to apply. Then one can get prescription specific topical treatments and that's known as the Kligman's formula which contains hydroquinone amongst other types of ingredients and the hydroquinone is a lightning solution and here depending on with the doctor that you see they can prescribe anywhere from a 2 to a 6% hydroquinone in a type of cream uh, or um, some type of uh, moisturizing agent where, where that hydroquinone is, is put in. Other than that, um, when it comes to your uh, treatments, I would consider Dermapen, but specifically by adding retinol. Um, and I would use that first before, and that's just my opinion and my approach in our practice, before considering a laser-based treatment. And the very simple reason for that is that your fractional lasers and your deep pigmenting lasers have shown to be effective in, a, in about 40% of people and another 40% not, or 30% not that effective and um, doesn't really change. And in a certain percentage, it actually can make it look worse. So before um, uh, using that method or approach, I would use a topical regime first and then consider um, something like dermapen, dermapen sorry, before some form of laser treatment. 
Okay, uh, Minette, I've got another question here from Minette. Thank you for your question. Uh, my 11-year-old son has started to get blackheads. What's the best routine for him? Um, Minette, the easiest uh, solution and way I would start off is to get some form of salicylic acid-based cleanser, uh, basically an acne-based cleanser, and uh, let him uh, use it on the area where, where those little pores are starting, on the little blackheads, and see if that makes a difference uh, for him. Um, but that's, that's as, as I wouldn't do more than that for now. And remember, um, by use, using the cleanser twice a day, and you will only notice uh, the actual results of this type of approach with four to six weeks of consistent use. So it's not that you'll use it one or two, two uh, mornings and nights and that is going to get better. It can take a good four to six weeks. Okay, I've got a question now from Vashni. Thank you, Vashni. Uh, toners used to be a big part of skin routines. Do you think they are still important? Um, yes, I do. You know, toners, uh, I, I agree with you, toners have kind of taken a back seat. Um, but uh, the reason for that is because toners at, at one stage, and we're talking a long, quite, a, quite a while ago, a good 15 years, got a bad reputation, they got a bad uh, name, and mostly because they were quite harsh, they were stringent, uh, they sensitized people's skin, um, they produced reactions, um, but the, the manufacturers, the brands that make them have changed things. The you know toners have become very specific for very certain skin types and skin concerns. So you can find toners that are not astringent and not harsh um, for sensitive skin. Uh, you can find uh, toners that are specific for acne or oily skin. And why it's important is because your cleanse routine can only do so much. The toner is the, is the extra step to improve that uh, degree of makeup removal of pores, improvement in pores, um, uh, adding antioxidants to your skin, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, for me, I a great question. Uh, I think toner should be used, but uh, it is budget dependent, obviously, for, for a lot of people. Thanks, Manette, Jan, it's a pleasure. I'm glad that, um, I'm glad that helped. Um, Tash, uh, are actives like vitamin C? Tash, thank you for the question. Are actives like vitamin C, hyaluronic acid, and niacinamide as serums safe whilst on reaccutane? You know, yes, Tash, the, the, they're 100% safe. They're not contraindicated at all. Um, the only uh, active ingredient that I would use, not use, if you're on reaccutane is a vitamin A or retinol. Um, it's a pleasure, Vashni. Thank you. Um, so... Vitamin C, HA, and I still know what 100% safe. The only concern I might have is that vitamin C, depending on which vitamin C ingredient, generally, but vitamin C can be sensitizing on the skin. So, Tash, if you are on Reaccutane, what I would do is introduce your vitamin C based serum slowly and see if there's a reaction. Um, you may also want to consider doing a test patch, which is a small area, whether it's on the side of the cheek. Um, on the side of the head or by the forehead, etc. But just a small area, apply it once every third, third morning uh, for two weeks and then apply every second morning for two weeks and then every morning. And if no reaction takes place, you can then apply it to, to the full face. Um, ascorbic acid is exactly as the name suggests, it's an acid. And so when it is applied to the skin, it can produce a sensitizing reaction. And if the reaccutane is already sensitized the skin a little bit, you may develop a slight reaction. So it's best to, just to test it out. But generally, HA and isinamide, not only are they moisturized based ingredients, but they're also skin restoring uh, ingredients. And so even if the skin is slightly sensitized, it will help actually calm it down. It will help improve um, the skin. So those are great ingredients to use. Blue, thank you for the question. Why are there no retinal products higher than 2.5%? Uh, is it dangerous to use higher concentrations? Surely higher the better. Okay, so um, <laughs> yes, the, the, there's, there's quite an, we have to go through um, why retinol has a limit. Now generally, I've never actually seen a retinol of higher than 1%. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if it is a, a true uh, retinol of 2.5%. Um, but generally, the reason why there's a limit is because retinol as a, an ingredient and the majority of vitamin A products produce sensitivity reactions on the skin. And the skin can tolerate only so much 
uh, before it becomes sensitized. And those sensitivity reactions can be quite severe, from a dermatitis to retinoid reactions. The skin can become red, uh, sloughs, it can, even, um, um, it can even seep a little bit. So yes, there's a limit because of that concentration. However, and this is the big however, um, the, it's not the actual ingredient that one is applying that's causing the reaction. We, on our skin, we have receptors which are called retinoic acid receptors. And whichever vitamin A ingredient we apply on the skin, it needs to be converted in the skin to become a retinoic acid to bind to that receptor to have the effect that we want on the skin. And it's been shown that that conversion process is what causes the reaction on our skins. So retinol has a number of steps before it's a retinoic acid. And so the higher percentage you use, the greater that degree of reaction that will be before it gets converted to retinoic acid. That is one of the main reasons why some manufacturers are looking at retinol alternatives, such as grain active retinol, which is actually a retinoic acid ester. And that, when it gets applied to the skin, binds directly to the actual um, receptors. And in those instances, higher concentrations can be used because it's limiting the effect. But you're 100% right. The higher we do go with percentages, the better the effect. But that's dependent on whether your skin can actually tolerate, um, tolerate that actual percentage uh, once it's applied onto the skin. Um, what in-practice treatments are safe while on Reacutan? That's from Vashni. Thank you, Vashni. So... Um, Basically, your injectable treatments, um, such as Botox and dermal fillers, are safe while you're on Reacutan. Um, but, um, and also some chemical pills are, are fine to use, especially the superficial ones. But generally, when you're on Reacutan, especially on a daily dose and, and a high dosage, uh, uh, we don't recommend IPL laser treatments uh, or even Dermapen. Um, I would stay away from the, those kind of treatments uh, while you're on Reacutan, Vashni. Um, but some superficial chemical pills and your injectable treatments are, are, are definitely fine and, and safe to, to use. Thanks. Thank you, Tasha. It's a pleasure. I'm asking, do I need to wait a few minutes between applying serums, moisturize, etc., or can they be applied immediately um, after each other? Now, thanks, Janet. That's actually quite a good uh, question. It depends on the serum. Um, basically, what we want is for that serum to be absorbed. And uh, a lot of serums basically are formulated for a very quick absorption. So if, and remember serums, you only need a small amount uh, to cover the whole face. And if once you apply it, the, whether there's a slight tackiness while you're applying it or a slight wetness, and that disappears, then you can apply your moisturizer straight over it. Um, so yes, you, uh, the, you don't really have to wait uh, quite a few minutes. Um, it's as long as it, it, it feels like it's actually sunk into the skin, um, you can then apply your moisturizer and, and or sunscreen uh, to the skin. Okay, Celeste, um, thank you for the question. Any advice for an oily skin? Yeah, so um, the first thing, and I'm sure you've heard this before, is that you know oily skin types um, have one benefit, and um, that the aging is a lot slower. Uh, the extra sebum um, in the skin uh, makes the skin a lot thicker, uh, more resilient, uh, and, and it'll, it'll actually slow down that aging process. However, the downside is that typically it's associated with a shiny skin, it's a show associated with more visible pores, and it's also associated with a more textured-like skin. And so basically, we need to kind of manage that. Your, firstly, your topical skin regime all of the products you use need to be specific for an oily based skin. So that's your, your first. Your second is that your cleanser should contain salicylic acid. Salicylic acid helps um, to cleanse the skin and helps to remove as much sebum as possible. I would also consider some form of toner or, should, or solution based um, type of product um, with salicylic acid that you apply on, on the skin because that will work um, to help with that sebum and the oil. Um, things to look at, for example, is the Dermaquest uh, Dermaclear pads. Um, you can even look at the Neostrata 
uh, uh, pads and I would also look at your cleansiderm and I would also put a pore therapy but I, um, I would also consider something like the skin pure we've had um, quite a few uh, good feedback on uh, with the skin pure when it comes to oily skin and then part of your oily skin regime should definitely include a vitamin A um, or a retinol based serum at night Retinol has advantages uh, to work as an antioxidant to help stimulate the skin for collagen production. It'll help with aging concerns, uh, but one of its effects on the skin is to control the sebum and minimize the size of the pores. And overall, that, that would be my approach um, from a topical at home regime. And then what you could consider just to boost that effect that you're doing at home is to do a look at a chemical peel um, such as glycolic acid or a salicylic acid based or something that uh, has mendelic uh, acid in it in, as a chemical peel because that will help target the pores and the sebum as well as the bacteria on the skin. So I hope that's helped. Thanks, Celeste. Um, Lunette, uh, thank you for your question. Which ingredients are good for treating dark spots? Um, thanks, Lynette. Uh, we've had, as you can see, quite a few questions uh, being asked uh, about pigmentation, uh, dark spots, um, brown spots, etc. Now, uh, you, for me, the best ingredients is vitamin C, arbutin, kojic acid, and retinol. Um, so, for me, generally look for a vitamin C arbutin combination for the morning and a kojic acid or a vitamin A uh, for the evening. Um, so definitely look at those ingredients and on top of all that the most important is your sun protection which needs to be used um, several times a day especially where those those dark spots are okay Tash um, thank you for the question um, any products that work best for treating PIH um, the brown spots where we've just kind of spoken about it PIH for, uh, for those people um, that are not 100% sure that's post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation we had a similar question earlier on um, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation you basically have to treat with your sun protection uh, applied several times a day you need to use sun avoidance so wear a hat um, and then definitely consider adding a topical skin regime with serums that have ingredients that focus on treating pigmentation problems. And I've just mentioned it. It's your vitamin C, your kojic acid, your retinol, as well as arbutin. And there's quite a number of brands um, that, that have those type of ingredients. The Baji range, the Dermaquest range, the Skin range, the Mel range, SkinCeuticals. There's quite a few of those brands that contain those ingredients uh, that will help with the pigmentation. And then you may want to consider uh, if after six to eight weeks of use of that topical regime that you're not seeing a good enough improvement, consider something like IPL uh, on those dark spots, which will help to um, reduce. IPL is intense pulse light, and that's an in-office treatment. You need to have it done professionally, um, either by, by your uh, therapist uh, or by your uh, cosmetic doctor. Okay, we've got a question here from Fallon. Thank you, Fallon. Uh, you mentioned salicylic acid. What form is best? I know you can get it in capsules. Fallon, unfortunately, you need to use it uh, top in a topical uh, product. and uh, So it needs to be applied onto the skin and it'll either be in the form of your cleanser and or a topical solution, whether it's in a toner or as in a leave-on solution kind of um, product. And so an example there is your Dermaquest, Dermaclear pads, your Skin Pure, um, your Lamel uh, Clarity, uh, all of those contain salicylic acid in a topical regime. Um, but in a capsule form, you're not going to get much improvement uh, when it comes to treating pores and or oily skin. Um, and just to recap what I, I was saying about the type of regimes and uh, what you need to get from a moisturizer to a cleanser, that it's for specific for your skin type and, and then to tackle your skin concerns, that's where you put to your budget uh, into your serums with active ingredients. Um, hi, Miss B. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, hi, Dr. Hi. What can I use for black circles? I've tried everything, but nothing seemed to work. You know, the, the, the approach when it comes to dark circles, and I, and I believe you mean around the eye area, is we need to find the cause. Once we find the cause, then we can uh, prescribe the best treatment. And um, so it is, it, unless we know, and unless I can actually see those dark circles and, become, and examine them, it, it's very difficult. However, 
in saying that there are only three reasons for dark circles. Um, there are three causes. Uh, sorry, there are four, I'll, and I'll explain the fourth one. The first is because there is pigmentation. There's pigmentation that's been laid down, whether it's on the skin surface or below the skin surface, whether it's through sun damage, genetic causes, etc. But the first is pigmentation. The second is because of an increased vascularity. What that means is that we have a, a high amount of superficial veins which are found just below the skin surface. And this network of veins is producing a darkening effect on the skin. The third is the uh, tear trough, which is what we use to describe a depression where the skin falls into a trough. And where that skin falls against the bone, it produces what we call a shadow effect. The light that gets reflected off our skins uh, is, is reflected less in that, that deep trough versus, like, for example, the cheek, which is more forward. And that gives a darkening effect. And the fourth reason, which is why I said uh, there are, are four and, and not three, is a combination of those. So we see some patients which have pigmentation, a high vascularity, and a tear trough. Those are the most difficult to treat because you kind of need to treat three different things to be able to give, um, thanks Tash, it's a pleasure, to give the best effect. So um, to answer your question, it depends which of that it is. To, to give you the answer, I would need to examine um, those areas. Um, to get, but if it's pigmentation, we normally refer for a very specialized laser that one can actually use in that area, that delicate eyelid area. If it's vascularity, then we also use laser to cauterize all those veins so that you lighten that area. And if it's a tear trough, Whereas a depression where the skin has fallen, what then what we would do is we use dermal filler to lift the skin so that that shadow effect is, disappears. And then sometimes, if it's all three, we start with all three and we start in the order of the severity. If pigmentation is the biggest contributing factor, we treat that first. Then we assess and we treat the second most uh, uh, and the third most uh, in that order. Okay, guys, that's, that's 11 o'clock. Um, thank you for all the encouragement. Thank you for all the great messages. I really appreciate that. And thank you so much for joining and for all the questions. I wish all of you only the very best during this lockdown and even after um, that you all stay healthy and safe during this period and that your family um, are, are healthy and uh, just uh, all be well. And thanks a lot. And we will be doing, because we've had a great response, uh, we will be doing this uh, in the future.